Shalom and welcome to Parashah Express, the weekly fix for spiritual lessons taken from the Parashah. Grab your coffee and let's take a look at the weekly Torah reading. This week we'll be looking at Parashah Mishpatim, which runs from Exodus chapter 21 verse 1 to chapter 24 verse 18. Enjoy it and don't forget to give us your feedback on Facebook, Twitter or via our website. He was sent to the famous Devil's Island penal colony for a crime that he didn't commit. Banished from his country as a traitor, forced to live isolated away from family and friends, Alfred Dreyfus is perhaps the most well-known case of a miscarriage of justice. A French soldier, loyal to the cause, he was accused of supplying information to the Germans. Despite a flimsy case against him, he was sentenced and denounced as a traitor. Yet his family didn't give up on him and were finally able to prove his innocence and find the real culprit. The fact that Dreyfus was Jewish added another dimension to the case. Anti-Semitic riots broke out in France as people protested both his innocence and guilt. It was a classic case of the Jewish scapegoat. It's impossible to know how many genuine miscarriages of justice like the Dreyfus affair there have been over the course of history. Sometimes it's easy to despair and ask ourselves if there's even a point to having a legal system given such horrendous mistakes. There's no justice, as the saying goes. And yet that is the theme of this week's parasha, as we get into the nitty-gritty of various diverse laws that more or less all have to do with justice. Justice for slaves, justice for thieves, justice for a myriad of different cases. Chapter after chapter, we read about many laws and judgments, and all to show us that justice is very important to God. Perhaps the summary of this week's portion can be found in the famous statement on retribution, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Whatever wrong someone has done, they deserve to have it done back to them. We also read that restitution has to be made in case of accidental or purposeful loss of or damage to property. God is concerned that we treat each other well as a society and as a people. No one is to take advantage or exploit anyone else. We're all supposed to live in peace and harmony. There's supposed to be perfect justice, not miscarriages of it. If justice is so important to God, why isn't there justice in the world? Is perhaps the question that you're asking yourself as you listen to this. It's a good question. If God is going to take the time to give us his law and outline a whole set of legal principles, why does he seem unconcerned if they're broken? Why does he let wrongdoers get away with it? Why doesn't he step in to prevent people being sentenced for crimes they haven't committed? We're in good company if we're asking these types of questions. Job asked this question, as did the prophets and the psalmists. They cried out for God's justice to be done. There is, however, a problem in our cry for justice, as I've mentioned in a previous podcast. If we want justice, then we have to want justice across the board, which means that we also have to want justice for ourselves when we do wrong. After all, if we want justice for the people who hurt us, but don't want them to have justice when we hurt them, what good is that? That's not justice at all. That's bias. Perhaps the real question we need to be asking ourselves is, are we willing to face justice for all of the wrong we've done? Of course, we're not murderers or rapists or thieves, at least not the majority of us. And that's what makes it hard for us to see that we need to be held accountable. There are always people who are worse than us. But if we're truly honest, we can think of a number of things that we've said, done or thought that were wrong. We've hurt people by our actions and our words. These things might seem small in our eyes, normal imperfections that you'd expect from imperfect people. But to a perfectly just and fair judge, indeed the only one who is truly just, these wrongdoings also need to be brought to justice. We find ourselves standing before the judge of the whole universe with nothing in our defense. Our plea is guilty as charged there would be no miscarriage of justice in our case. But let's return to our initial question, which we still need to answer. Why does God allow injustice? Because, thankfully, God is not a pre-programmed, emotionless, unrelatable robot. 
He is a compassionate father who tempers his justice with mercy. God allows injustice in this world because if he didn't, he would either have to make us robots that always obey him but have no free will, or he would have to wipe out humanity. All of us, whether we wouldn't hurt a fly or are a serial killer, stand guilty before God, unable to live up to his standard because we broke ourselves. We're a shadow of our former selves since our parents rejected God in the garden. We're not what we should be. If we demand justice for all the injustice in the world, then we're actually asking God to put the whole human race in a proverbial prison. We're all guilty, no exceptions. But there's also good news despite our damning position. God's mercy allowed him to find a solution to the problem we got ourselves into. Justice for all this world's injustices was meted out, just not on those who deserve it. When Yeshua the Messiah died almost 2,000 years ago, he took on himself the punishment for all of the garbage in our lives, all the wrongdoing, wrong staying, wrong thinking. The just judge condemned us humans for our lawlessness, but he punished the Messiah, his son, instead of us. This was the greatest miscarriage of justice of all time, the Messiah choosing to take the fall for us. Now, if we choose to put our faith in what he's done for us, we can stand before God guiltless. He himself changes our plea to not guilty, even though we should be rotting in a dungeon. Through the Messiah's resurrection, we are changed and can live new lives with his law written on our hearts instead of on stone. So we find that justice has been meted out for all the injustice in this world. God has not forgotten, nor turned a blind eye, nor put in earplugs. And yet not everyone takes him up on the offer of a clean slate, a new record, a new identity. If we reject what the Messiah did for us, then we still stand before the judge of all the earth with our plea of guilty. Nothing else can rescue us from being sentenced. Not all the mitzvot in all the world, nor tzedakah, nor prayer. Not even Moshe Rabbeinu. Indeed, the Messiah himself said that Moses would be the one to accuse us before God of not keeping the Torah that he received. One day, if we choose to reject the Messiah Yeshua, God's condemnation of our law-breaking will result in us being eternally punished. The gavel will come down with no chance of an appeal. There's no justice. That's the saying, but the saying is wrong. There was justice, and there will be justice, perfect justice. Justice not just for those who've done us wrong, but also for those we've wronged. We have a choice. Will our plea remain guilty as charged? Or are we willing to accept what the Messiah has done for us and be declared not guilty? How will you plead? That's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed our Parashah Espresso. Please don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get the latest episodes. We'd love to hear from you, so please get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or via our website at youdenfearjesus.de.